Good morning and praise the Lord. We thank God for being with us throughout this week, uh, this being uh, the sixth day. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we are thankful and grateful for being with us throughout this week. As we reflect on the last portion of Colossians 2.1, 2, 2, 2, be with us, speak to us, illuminate your word that we'll be able to hear what you want to say to us. In Jesus' name, amen. So if you are joining us for the first time, this week's topic is the danger of human philosophy. And in, this, uh, in the first day on the 14th, we looked at an overview of this particular portion of scripture, Colossians 2, 1 to 9. And we saw that the heart of this particular portion is Paul is sharing with the church of Colossae his struggle and great burden that he had for them. Paul took time to pray for them, to write, to encourage them to be united in Christ and to actually warn them against deception of human philosophies. On Tuesday, we saw, uh, we looked at verses 1 to 3 and we saw that Paul was encouraging the Colossian church to be united in Christ's love. Paul, in these verses, shared his heart and his spiritual burden for them, urging them and encouraging them to be united in the love of Christ, because if they do so, they would be able to gain understanding of the mystery of God, which is Christ, the treasure chest of wisdom. On Wednesday, we looked at the topic warning against being deceived. We looked at verses 4 to 5, and we see the first warning that Paul gives to the Colossian church against being misled or deceived by well-crafted arguments. But then he applauds them for being orderly in their faith in Christ and encourages them to continue in this way because for as long as they continue to be orderly in Christ, then they would be able to escape being deceived. On Thursday, we looked at the topic grounding and rooting in Christ, verses 6 and 7. And here Paul kind of concludes what he's been saying. And here he tells the Colossian church that after all this that I've told you, this is how you ought to behave. This is how you ought to live your life. And he tells them to be rooted and grounded in Christ. Then on Friday, we looked at the second warning against being captured with empty philosophy in verse 8. And here Paul gives the warning to the Col Colossian church, telling them to be watchful lest they be held captive by human philosophies that are self-deluding, full of worldly wisdom that could lead them to death, both spiritual and physical. And so today, being the sixth day, we will be looking at the topic, fullness in Christ, considering verses 9 and 10. In these two verses, Paul asserts the deity of Christ, and he says, in Christ lives all human fullness of God in human body. In Christ lives all fullness of God in human body body. Now verses 9 and 10 read, for in Christ all the fullness of the deity lives in bodily form and in Christ you have been brought to fullness. He is the head over every power and authority. So Paul is saying in these two verses that all of God was in Christ's human body. Meaning that when we have Christ, we have everything we need for salvation and right living. In Christ, as we saw in verse 3, are all the hidden treasures. Meaning Christ unlocks access to the stores of divine truth, the deep things of God. Amazing. This hidden treasure are wisdom and knowledge. 
how to gain life and how to live it. They now are made available for you and I when we choose Christ to be our shepherd, our Lord and our Savior. Now Proverbs chapter 3 verse 13 and 14 says, Happy is the man who finds wisdom and understanding, for profit from it is more valuable than silver and it yields more profit. It's better, it yields better than gold. This proverb here is telling us we are blessed. We are in a better place if we have the wisdom of God for it will give better yields and it will profit more than the profit that this world wisdom gives. Why, you may ask? Because it's wisdom for living. When you are in Christ Jesus, then if you allow him to be Lord of your life, automatically he will guide you into wisdom for living. You can have all the money, that's what this proverb is telling us, and all the wealth the world could ever give, but fail to have wisdom to keep your relationships thriving. You can fail to be able to enjoy life, probably because life becomes depressing, things are not going as you would want them, and that robs you of the joy of life. Paul, in 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 4 to 6, says, In their case, the God of this present world, who is actually Satan, has blinded their minds of unbelievers, has blinded the minds of unbelievers, so that the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God and would not shine into them, for we do not preach ourselves, but Christ, Jesus the Lord, and our Savior, but Christ Jesus our Lord, and ourselves, your servants, for Jesus' sake. So Paul is telling us that those who choose to follow the wisdom of this world are actually deceived by Satan. And unfortunately, they are not able to, to grasp the gospel of Jesus Christ, which contains the wisdom for living. Paul is telling us that this is the divine nature of Christ Jesus. Following the gospel, allowing Jesus to be your shepherd and Lord. In verse 10, Paul says, we are complete through our union with Christ, who is the head of over every ruler and authority. Meaning that if you are in Christ, then there is nothing else that the world could ever offer that has better authority to speak into your life and how you ought to live than Christ himself. Meaning, culture and whichever other customs, either your ethnic community or the Kenya culture, culture could give you, could never ever give you wisdom for living. In this world, I know you have come across people who are searching for something to boost their lives. And actually, very few people seem content with them within themselves. There is a strange and inner vacuum that gives most people an easy sense of incompleteness. There is something missing. And Paul is telling us in these two verses, and actually in the entire passage, that Christ is the only one who could ever fill that vacuum. Jesus is fully divine, so we who are united by faith to Jesus find fulfillment in him. You are actually complete through your union with Christ. 
Now, the reason why many of us are unfulfilled, many of us think Jesus doesn't work, it's useless to be a Christian because I still have problems. I'm so depressed. I'm not even happy. It's because even though you have given your life to Jesus Christ, you still are living life for yourselves. You are out to ensure you get everything you could ever get in this life. Many of us have taken Matthew chapter 6, verse 33, the other way around. Matthew 6, 33 says, Seek ye first the kingdom of God, and all other things will follow. Many of us are seeking all these other things, and we are hoping that Christ will follow. My friend, it doesn't work like that. You seek the kingdom of God first. It's your priority to let Jesus rule and reign in your heart. And how can you know that Jesus is ruling and reigning in your heart? How can you know that you are pursuing the kingdom of God first? Well, when was the last time you preached the gospel to somebody? And you told them that Jesus loves them and wants to save them. Many of us just live lives for ourselves and you watch people are falling away into sin and you say nothing. You are saying it is their life. No, you have a mandate. Matthew chapter 28, go ye therefore. Matthew 28, 18 and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey all I have commanded with you, and I will be with you to the end of the world. Christ can't be with you because you are busy pursuing the things of this world, the things that he says they will follow if you pursue the kingdom of God. Secondly, we hardly are bearing the fruit of the Spirit. The Holy Spirit is not in leading and guiding us. He's not empowering us to do what we ought to do, which is to bear fruit. Galatians 5.22 says, the fruit of the Spirit is love, peace, joy, and it goes on. Many of us live in bitterness and unforgiveness. We don't exercise self-control. We are not patient with one another. We are not kind with one another. When somebody does something wrong, you are looking for a mo moment to revenge. How are you bearing fruit when you live that kind of a life? So, do you see why I'm saying we are living for ourselves? Are you surprised then why you are not fulfilled in Christ? Because you go seeking the wisdom of this world rather than the wisdom of Christ. You see, the wisdom of Christ looks foolish. How can I love somebody who is abusive to me? How can I be kind to somebody who is so unkind to me? Well, that's what Christ calls us to. It's foolishness to man. But if you do that and trust the Lord, then he is going to lead you and to guide you that you may experience life to the full that John 10.10 10 talks about. May the Lord help you and I not to be deceived by human philosophy, by the wisdom of this world. And in the end, we end up missing out on the wisdom that Christ gives to those that choose him to be their Lord and Savior. Let us pray. Our Heavenly Father, we are thankful and grateful Thank you for your word. You have led us throughout this week to refute the human wisdom and to be contented with your wisdom. Only you can help us, Lord. Help us, therefore, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. May the Lord bless you.